Hi, I am Andy the Nitrous, and this is my corner of the internet where I like to share all things yarn. You can find me on the internet as Andy the Nitrous on Instagram and Ravelry. Also, you can find me as the Naughty Nitrous on Instagram, Facebook, and Ravelry pertaining to my small business. If you are a new viewer, welcome. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for supporting my channel and, and following along. So let's get started. So I have an FO. It's finished and I love it. This is the Penguono by Stephen West, and it is knit out of lots of yarn that I had in my stash. I frogged a project that I had started to start the bulk of it, the orange and the green purple that is in here. Those are, um, this one is Gomitolo Degrade, and this was Plymouth Mushishi. Um, that was what had got me to start this project. I will insert a video of me kind of showing it off. Um, lots of other things are just scraps from my little stash pumpkin and little odds and ends that I had around. I still have quite a bit of yarn left over from this. Um, none of my hand spun that I put in there, the hand spun kind of got used up, but I have some more of odds and ends that I might put in maybe a garter marler in the future. Um, but I am in love with this sweater. Um, and thank goodness the air is on because that's the only reason I can keep this on because it is hot outside right now. So, um, another FO that I have, I finished the Wigan Tree Hat by Jenny Noto. Um, I got so excited when I was knitting this hat. I haven't knit a hat in a really long time. I cast on the brim. Uh, I altered it. I did um, tubular cast on versus uh, long tail, which I think they suggested, but I kept the twisted rib stitch that they recommended after the initial cast on. I forgot to switch to the larger size needle for the body of the hat. So it's a little little. <laughs> it is not going to fit my head, but it'll be a good hat for for somebody and this yarn is Lava Lamp by Hearing Colors Dye Works and it is not this orange in person it is it is a lot lighter I have a hard time filming this particular color if you are interested to see what it actually looks like hop on over to the naughtynitrous.com and look at that yarn I will have it linked down below I have this really awesome pom-pom that I got at Black Sheep Gathering um, and I think that they go really nicely together and as soon as I find my pom-pom buttons I will put them together. Um, pom-pom buttons are essentially a button with two large slits in it that you can um, thread the, the pom-pom strings through the hat then through the button on the inside of the hat and tie it in a bow and then it just stays there. I got them off of Etsy. I will link it down below and maybe pop in a picture of what they look like. I can't find mine. I bought them a while ago and I'm sort of slightly disorganized so I can't find them right now. I probably tucked them away somewhere so that I could find them and They'll be found when they want to be found. So um, another finished object that I have, I finished, uh, well, I started and finished on my Erlbacher Gearheart, my 
Jack and Sally socks. I got this yarn from uh, Laura at Always Be Kind Yarn. And Jack and Sally sock set. These were uh, 50 gram sock set with um, a mini, the black mini. That's the option that I chose. And all of her proceeds support suicide awareness. She has such lovely colors in her shop, but I had to get this pair because I love Nightmare Before Christmas and this is just, this is just awesome. And of course I did these, uh, the roll top, cause as you know, those are my favorite socks on my 64 cylinder lycra held throughout and I do a deep rounded heel and a rounded toe for my socks. And another thing that I finished was my Kirby Werby yarn that came in and that is the Rose Apothecary colorway and this uh, is Astonishment by Knitted Wit and then Habanero by Knitted Wit as well as Astonishment again. But this is a full repeat of the striping sequence and I just love that. It's just rainbow and fun and it makes me happy. And this again is 64 stitches, deep rounded heel, rounded toe, on my Erlbacher gear heart with Lycra throughout. So that is an FO. I do have another FO that is a sock project, but I thought it was kind of cool to show you. This is Regia Schackenmeyer um, with Wool in the Gang, and it's called Kind of Magic Sock Yarn. And it's really neat because the yarn does all of this patterning for you. You don't have to do any color work um, the way that it is set up. You can see that my gauge was a little off here in the beginning and then I adjusted it and then am able to get the animal print in that sock. So those are really fun. This color is called Perfect Purple. Um, and they come in these little boxes like this here. This is, um, this one is called Feline Good Green. And you have the little ball of yarn and they have this yellow here, which is the waist yarn. So it kind of gives you a point of knowing exactly where to start. There's a really awesome instruction booklet on the inside to tell you what gauge that you should knit it at and lots of detailed instructions in there and they let you know you know if your gauge is kind of not falling where it needs to be there's a couple of chances to make it right so that you can achieve the end goal and since i have this pair already for myself i figured i would give this pair away now this one is the Feline Good Green, so it will not be uh, the purple like this one. It will be green on the inside there. So uh, stick around until the end and I will tell you how to enter to win this sock yarn. So that is all of the knitting FOs that I have. I do have um, one spinning FO. I decided to cast on, not cast on, I decided to spin up that lovely yarn that Shaylee from Hens and Chicks died for me for my birthday. This was the one died after there's a beetle in my juice. And it's just so pretty. This is um, Superwash Cheviot and Faux Cashmere. And it's just so squishy. 
and I love it. It's a little rustic and wooly feeling. I have not soaked this yet, so there's still a little bit of extra twist in my in my skein here, but I think I achieved, um, I'd say it's like a DK worsted weight. I don't remember how many yards I ended up with, but it's just so pretty. I don't know what it's gonna be, but it will probably end up living in something gorgeous like this eventually. That's what I kinda like to do with my hand spun since I never spin large amounts of um, yarn that are the same color. I have like single skeins of lots of different spins and I like to put them together in fun projects like this. So um, it will probably eventually live in something that is scrappy. Um, thank you Shaylee so much for dyeing that up for me. I fell absolutely in love with that color. It's just so beautiful. I love it. So yeah, in here, like this is some hand spun in this section, as well as over here held with that. So I just like to put my hand spuns in fun projects like that. Um, yes, that's all of my FOs. Um, so I thought I would show you guys some past FOs, like kind of where I came from and where I'm at now. Cause now I like to knit scrappy things and I'm a more confident knitter. I kind of have always been a confident knitter in, in all actuality. Um, but I thought I'd kind of show you, you know, where I started. So I used to think, funny enough, that I was allergic to wool. I am not allergic to wool. I'm allergic to the winter heat. <laughs> uh, you know, I get really dry skin and kind of red patches in the winter time when the heat comes on. And I used to think that because I was knitting in the winter with wool yarn that I was allergic to wool. And I was not, it was really just the it was just the change in the weather. I associated the two together because I would knit when it got cooler and then the heater would be coming on. So I thought it was the yarn and it was not. So I used to knit everything in cotton and not just like cotton, but like lily sugar and cream cotton. So dishcloth cotton, everything I made was in cotton all of the time, but this is one of the things that I used to like to make. Crazy, weird little hats. I kind of would get a hat pattern. You know, this is kind of old. This is, this is uh, um, probably 15 years old. I don't know. Um, and I would just like make crazy, weird little monsters. I'd crochet the eyeballs and then pull some yarn through and just make weird little monsters and I kind of would just create these things out of my head and learn how to manipulate the stitches. You know, if you look back here at the crown, it's a little wonky, um, but I still love this hat. You know, it's still a fun, hat sometimes if we'll, we're going out on Halloween trick-or-treating and I didn't put a costume together or my husband didn't we'll just throw on one of the old monster hats and and uh kind of go from there so this and I don't know I just kind of have always jumped in and tried to create things so this is where I've come from now this hat is large it is very big I knew nothing about gauge back then. I have always kind of magically knit at whatever the stitch gauge says on the yarn labels. Like if it says to use a size seven and I'm gonna get five stitches per inch, that is what I got. Um, I've been blessed that way. So I never, I didn't understand that gauge could change. 
and I didn't have a hat pattern for this. I just guessed. I didn't know about doing yarn math and whatnot. So I just would cast on any number that I randomly felt like and create things. There are several of my friends who um, were the recipients of some crazy fun monster hats. So that is, that's kind of where I came from. Another um, pattern that I kind of just came up with is not as old. It's probably about five years old. Um, my daughter watched this fun little show on Netflix at Christmas one year and it was called Pedicin and Findus and it's in a different language and we'd watch it with the subtitles but it was a cute little it's after some children's books and there was like an older guy with these fun yellow hats all the time and like an animated like CG cat I will pop in a picture if I can but anyway he had this cool hat on and it was felted the hat in in the picture but I wanted to see if I could create it and I did this came completely from my head um, and I did the shaping like his hat was in the image and the little curly flaps and the button flap here and I did all of the shaping to kind of give it like it's got like sort of a banana shape at the top so coming from not knowing how to do things properly and just experimenting taught me all of the skills that I needed to create something that I wanted to achieve. And this is really spot on to um, what, what I wanted. Now this is made out of cotton. I would love to in the future make it out of wool and felt it like the one from the movie but I don't even ever actually wear this hat um I just wanted to create it because I could it's such a fun hat though so that's kind of you know where I come from where I've traveled to and now I kind of just I make whatever it is that I want to make which is gonna lead me to my next whip, which is my Beetlejuice sweater, which I'm very excited about. I finally got to the color work. Uh, this is living in my Lila Styles Beetlejuice bag, and um, the rest of the yarn is in my other bag across the room that is a Stitching Plaza bag, and this is all pretty twisted BFL. Um, and they are all living in my ball socks in this bag to keep them organized. So let's show you how far I've come. I've got to give myself some leeway here with this yarn. So because I am doing self-striping sleeves on this, uh, I have to uh, knit flat back and forth. I cast on in the round for the collar and then after the collar, I stopped and I am now knitting back and forth. So I will knit across the front, around the side, to the back and turn. Um, and on this, I have this awesome fun stitch marker. This is from Simply Serving and my amazing friend Amber got this for me and it is Beetlejuice. And Amber got me a couple other things. I will brag about her in a minute. Um, but let's see if I can show it off so far. Here is the color work. You can see I've got one of the little skulls there, the big one there in the middle, and the other one there on the side. Now what I am doing, because there's a vast difference between this skull and this one over here, so that would have been some really long floats in between, I am doing jacquard ladder backing, which creates this fun 
um, like spider webby looking fabric on the back. And I'm not the best at explaining how to achieve that. There are several videos out there to show you how to get started. I wanna say that Roxanne Richardson, Roxanne Richards, Richards, Richardson, I will put it in here. Uh, she has a, a lovely video, it might be Susan Bryant. One of them has a really lovely video on jacquard ladder backing and how to set it up and they explain how it works, but essentially I made an extra stitch that is a purl stitch when it's on the front side and a knit stitch when it's on the back side and it kind of hides and it tucks it behind the work but gives you enough room to where when it's on the front you're not really going to see it now this sweater is a loose gauge so you can kind of see through anyway but it's it's nice, it hides the stitch as well, the floats. Instead of having to catch a float, you just knit a stitch. I just started on the lettering. I literally did one row on the lettering, which I had to redo that four times because I can't count, apparently. Um, it was just throwing me off because I would cast on the one stitch for the edge and then I would create a jacquard ladder back stitch and then I needed to work the stitches from the first letter. And um, I can show you here. So on in Beetlejuice, you can see how um, some of the letters are higher and some of the letters are lower. I did that in my chart as well. So the B would be the first letter that you would see and then the next E would be dropped down. So it's there's gonna be floats across there. Anyway, to get all the way across to that chart, and it's not like a pattern where it repeats because they're all different letters, it took me several times of casting on, and then I'd realize I was off and I'd have to rip it back and three times, but finally I got it, and then I set it down and took a break from it. But I'm really excited about this sweater. This one is probably gonna get a little more work this week. I just, as soon as I am done with this chart, I will be able to split for the sleeves and then it's gonna fly. I'm so excited. I'm so, so excited for this, but how, I mean, how awesome is that? This came from my head. I mean, you know, it came from somebody else's head originally, but I charted it out and figured out all the numbers and I'm making an awesome sweater. And if you would like the chart for the Beetlejuice, I am happy to give it to you. Please just send me a, a message and I would be happy to email you the chart. But I do not plan on writing this sweater pattern out. Um, I can kind of talk you through it, but honestly, the size of the chart number with the, the stitch gauge that I have um, kind of really only works for larger sweater sizes. So I made it custom to fit me. I would imagine that you could knit at a tighter gauge and then you would need more stitches for a smaller person so that you could make it work. But I will leave that math up to you. I can give you all the advice along the way though, if you would like it. So that is my Beetlejuice sweater. I'm excited about um, the next whip I have. I haven't really worked on my Zaftig tee at all. I think I got two rows, so I'm not gonna bother showing that. Um, so then the other main whip is my second Penguono. And I just dropped the yarn on the floor. So this is my pretty twisted penguono. And I am holding her yarn in triplicate and here is my back panel all finished. This is where this is where I was when I showed it to you guys last. I finished the rest of that panel and 
separated the stitches that need to be on hold and I have picked up for the first welt. And I am holding um, I am holding the yarn in triplicate, so I am holding this double with a strand of bare yarn. So from the inside and the outside of the ball, this one is Purple Rain. This will be the first welt. And then my plan is to do this for the second welt. And then this will be the third welt. But I'm going to have some green left over from my Beetlejuice chart. Maybe I will finish that chart and then go green. That would be fun. Those would be fun welts. I don't know. We'll see. I might stick with this because this one's like my Halloween penguono. And I want this one to be my bright, beautiful, neon colored penguono. Because Teresa loves neons and so do I and that's why I buy her yarn all the time <laughs> so that is that is what I have for whips really um, the next thing I can show you will be a uh, frog it or finish it so the last one that I showed you the rogue river shawl I frogged it that's why I decided that it wasn't bringing me joy and I just pulled the needles out of that, put them away, and I have the yarn sitting over on my table deciding if it'll get put in this, you know, in a project soon or if I will just put it away with the rest of my stash. So I grabbed another random bag from my area of whips and we'll see what's inside this one. This is a Stitch and Plaza bag. This is awesome. And let's see what is in here. Oh, this is a crochet whip. This is, let's see if I can find the main page. Is this the main page? Well, no, this is, here's a picture of it. This is a lovely crochet shawl. I want to say this is a really hard word for me to pronounce. It starts with a K. Um, yes, here it is. This is by Kristen Bishop. And I'm going to butcher this probably. I want to say this says Clozinia. Clozinia. Uh, I think that's the name of it, but it's got some lovely crocheted, it kind of reminded me of the Lost in Time shawl, which I absolutely love, so that is why I picked this pattern to cast it on, and let's see, I have it cast on in, this is a Hobie yarn, and it is one of their fun cakes there that's Halloween colored. It's a uh, 55 cotton, 45% acrylic, and it's called Twister Halloween color number 921. So there's that, and I'm using a Furls crochet hook in size E. Let's take a peek. And this, I think, was the first shawl I've ever done where it was a charted um crochet pattern and it oh it's kind of kind of big i think i'm not frogging this i think i'm gonna finish this one needs to be put in my current whips i'm not even gonna ask you guys i'm not frogging this there's no way it's so pretty um yeah this is not getting frogged that's not an option this is gonna get finished because i'm I've already repeated the pattern once, and I would say 
I would say I'm like at least a third, if not more, of the way through that cake. This is gonna get put to the front. How pretty is that? Like, it's gonna be awesome when that's finished. Yeah, this is not getting frogged. I will have this out with my current whips and I will work on that. Hold me accountable and keep asking me about it and maybe I'll actually finish it. I don't have a like a, an actual physical current crochet whip anyway, so yeah, I will. I will not be frogging that. It will be finished. So yeah, Let me put that back in there. So that's that's gonna be a finished one. All right, what do I have next? I have a couple of acquisitions. Um, so I got um, I got a few things for myself and. Oh, I forgot to show you on this sweater. So I got these, um, they're called tail tamers. And I got them from Twin Mommy Creations. And this is their card right there. And these were little samples that came with it um but they're called tail tamers and i have them living in my beetlejuice sweater because i've got all of my little ends tied up here and you wrap the yarn around there um and here let me kind of un do this one so you wrap your ends around and then you uh, pin it to your work so that your tails aren't in the way. So I got th these ones and they're cute little peni uh, tail tamers. Come on, focus. And I got um, an assortment of colors in these. But I really like it because sometimes my tails get all in the way and I don't want to necessarily weave them in. I do generally weave my tails in as I go, but in the beginning, especially on something like this where there's not a pattern um, and this is for my head, if I had to frog it, I, didn't, I wouldn't have wanted all my tails woven in. So I thought those were a great idea. Uh, now they do have just traditional bobbin shaped ones as well but i had to get the the naughty ones because why not so yeah and i've got see i've got them them all inside here just holding on to all my ends So that was an acquisition that I got for myself, as well as I got these fun little stitch markers because they're mushrooms and I couldn't pass them up. And this is from Twin Mountain Handcrafts. And those are just, they're just cute. So I had to, yeah. And then Stephanie from Blackbird Sycamore posted, now I didn't get the really awesome one that she posted the day after, but I got this one. Uh, she posted this amazing yarn and it is called This Is Halloween. So you know I had to get it this and let me take this off here so you guys can see it in all its beauty and then she did a jack and sally one which i need to get but 
have to slow down on acquisitions right now. Um, but how beautiful is that? That lovely lavender purple. It's like soft and you've got all these gorgeous speckles in there. And this is hand-dyed super sock 437 yards uh, 75 superwash merino 25 recycled nylon and when I was on her Etsy shop looking for this I saw that she had this and this is called daring and I just thought it was a very beautiful purpley pink gorgeous colorway so I snagged that up and she makes bags too she makes bags so I got this huge bag and it's got an awesome zipper pocket on the outside there is another pocket on this side you can put like your pattern in there and it's just super nice and she's got the little ring on the inside you can clip stitch markers you can run your yarn through there as a yarn guide you can clip a notions pouch to that she always sends this awesome little uh, laminated ruler uh, with her stuff and she's got the Kitchener stitch on there as well as all of her contact information and it's a ruler and I also got some cute little charms from her I got a bat and a spider and a broom and a pumpkin So, you guys should go check her out. She's She's got amazing colors in her shop. And she makes bags, too. So, go check out Stephanie's shop on Etsy. I will have it linked down below. Go give her a like and follow on uh, Instagram also. And that is the acquisitions that I have purchased for myself. And I got some acquisitions from my friend Amber. I showed you guys that awesome um, stitch marker she got. Amber is a Waning Gibbous, is it Waning Gibbous Creations or just Waning Gibbous? I will link her down below and I will put the words here. She does commission crochet um, as well as she's just an all around awesome person. So she got me that awesome stitch marker and this awesome bag. Uh, this is by Liam Loves You, and that is you like a sheep. And it is a Beetlejuice bag. It's got an amazing, like, sturdy rainbow colored clasp there. It's got a rainbow zipper, and it's got a Beetlejuice zipper pull like that is just awesome and then it's got sandworms on the inside it's just so cool I love it thank you so much Amber she also I said that she does commissioned crochet and I did not commission this from her, but she made it for me anyway. How cute is that? It's a little baby sandworm. Oh my gosh, it's just so cute. Look at his big giant eyes. Ah, oh, he's so cute. Thank you so much, Amber. This is really awesome. I know just where this is gonna live over in the corner on my desk. It's just so cute. Thank you so much for making that for me. You guys should go check her out. And 
that is all of the me acquisitions. I did get some more samples for the shop because I told you guys last time I wasn't happy with t-shirts. And that one little coffee mug that I was complaining, the little enamel one, uh, like the camper mug and the other mug, believe it or not, that little tiny mug, even though it looked smaller, held more liquid than the traditional coffee mug. Slightly more. But anyway, neither one of those are dishwasher safe. So I went ahead and ordered their other option, which is this one here. This is a 15 ounce mug and it says that it is dishwasher safe. They do recommend for the longevity of the print there that you hand wash it, but it is dishwasher safe. And it's a decent size mug. It's got a good handle. I can fit all my fingers in there. So I am happy with this. This is now available to be purchased from my shop. And I think if not, I will get, I will correct it. I also have it available in the Naughty Nitrous um, print also. So I got that ordered and then I ordered um, this pint glass. This is like um, matte. This is like plastic here. And then it's aluminum on the inside, so it's kind of like slightly insulated, but just a little pint glass for Bobby to have. Um, I didn't put that available on the merch shop. If you would be interested, let me know and I will make it available. But this was kind of just for me. And I did order... Um, I ordered this little tote bag that they have available. Now this is made out of hemp uh, and cotton. So it's 55% hemp and 45% cotton. It is eco-conscious. Um, it's a little pricey. It's a little pricey, honestly, for just a little zipper pouch so it is available for purchase if you are interested but um yeah it's a little on the higher end like this costs more than this tote bag because for whatever reason i don't know why but that is available on the naughtynitrous.com um, but it's a cute little pouch. You can hold your notions and such in. I'm going to put this in the pile for future giveaways. Because um, I don't need another bag. Um, I mean, I, I could use all the bags. But I don't need I have lots of bags. So that brings me to this massive tote that I ordered. Which I think is a good deal. Now this is also... Um, this is an eco bag. It's an everyday tote recycled cotton canvas. It says fair wage and fair labor. Um, so I guess it is just recycled cotton canvas. And this is printed on both sides and it's a really big, it's a really big tote. Um, and it says the naughty nitrous on one side. And it says, take life one stitch at a time on the other side. So that one is available for purchase um, on the Naughty Nitrist. Yes, it's 100% recycled cotton. So that is a good, good size tote. And this is also going in the pile for future giveaways. So... You know, the more subscribers I get, the more uh, giveaways I will do. Um, another thing that I got was an apron for myself. Oh, this. Um, I thought this was going to be a little bigger. Kind of bummed that it's kind of small. 
but it's a it's a decent sized little project bag so it's got the here in colors dye works logo on there and then it says take life one stitch at a time on the other side so i thought from the description of this bag i think that i read it incorrectly i thought it was going to be a little bigger i thought it was going to be closer to like the size of a piece of paper so it was a little small but it's a nice little sock project bag so this also will go in the future pile for giveaways so that you can win that in the future um the next thing i have is more shop talk i am we've got some new yarns in from hearing colors dye works let me move some of this stuff out of the way he has just been killing it with some of these colors and i am in love and it's very hard for me not to keep one of everything i want to i don't but i want to so he has dyed this color is called Halloween camo. Now, if you have been around for a while, you know that he likes to dye these colors that he calls camo. And it's just because of the way that he puts them in the pan and lays them out. He did a unicorn camo, he did a nitrous camo in the past. Um, I think he did maybe a galaxy camo. Well, he has done up a Halloween camo and it is gorgeous and it is awesome. And it knits up so beautifully. I have one here in a sock blank. So you can kind of see how it works up. And it's just so awesome. So very Halloween. And that is on the Fern Falls base. Yes, Fern Falls base, which is a fingering weight. 436 yards, 100 grams. 75% uh, superwash merino, 25% nylon. So that is available in the shop. And this is a repeatable colorway. This is, um, he doesn't repeat his colorways a lot of times because he does like to get in there and create, but any of the camel ones, he, uh, he, re he can recreate those. And... Um, also on the Fern Falls base, he has dyed confetti cake, which is just all kinds of fun. There's like an ecru colored base, which would be the cake, and then all of the sprinkles in that beautiful yarn. Now, I haven't knit a sample of this one up because why i don't know why oh i think that there were only three of these available which um maybe maybe four um but this is also i i do believe this one is a repeatable colorway so if you just want lots of fun speckles and colors go get that one and that is on the Fern Falls base and now I don't know if many of you know but the way that I have my website set up you there's a yarn dyer and each dyer has their own base and then or their bases and under the base is where the colors are listed so both of these colors would be in the same listing you would just select the color in the drop down because these are both on Fern Falls there's several other colors in the Fern Falls base and they're all listed under the same link it's just a way to keep me organized because i plan to have so many yarns so if it's organized in that fashion it's easier for me to find um he also recently dyed up some mcn some merino cashmere nylon i don't have my label over here this is the tokity falls base um, and it is a fingering weight and there is, I don't remember, I will put it in here. Um, I think it's 80, 10, 10, I could be wrong. But this color is called Lapis. 
like the stone and it's got lots of lovely blues and almost like reminds me of denim in some spots but that is showing up pretty well to what I am seeing here. So that is the Tokety Falls base um, merino cashmere nylon. And then recently, so I drew a picture <laughs> and it is very rudimentary. It is very, very hand-drawn. So I drew this picture and I said, can you dab me a yarn that looks like this? Because I think it will knit up a certain way. And he was like, okay, I will. Um, so he dyed this one up for me. And this is on the Lamolo Sparkle, Lamolo Falls Sparkle Base. And it's Beetlegeist. And this is gorgeous. It turned out awesome. I will put in a picture over here or something, uh, what it knits up like. I just love it. It's got so much sparkle. It's got all of those lovely colors from the Beetlejuice movie cover. And then it's got the black and the white sections, like sandworm. I just, I just love it. I love it so much. And I didn't even keep one of these. I, lo I love it so much. I did not keep one of these. I put them all out there for you guys because I don't know what I want to use it in yet. Might have to. And this is a repeatable colorway. He can dye more of this. So if you are interested in that, check that out. Also on this same base, he decided to dye one, one up called Butabi Brothers. And if you guys know what that movie is from, then you're awesome. Uh, it is from A Night at the Roxbury and it is Doug and Steve Butabi. And they're always like in these shiny suits and heading out to the nightclub. So this reminds him of that. And it is dyed in the same fashion. And I will pop in a picture of how that knits up as well. And that again is on the Lamolo Falls Sparkle Base, which is a 70% superwash merino, 20 nylon, 10 stellina. And that is 400 yards to 100 grams. So head on over and check those out. And he is just killing it with these colorways lately. I'm just, he kind of got a little upgrade to his dye studio. Um, so I think he's been having a little more fun. Now this one is brand new. It's not even listed yet. And this one is, I think he's going to call this one One-Eyed Willy. And that is not dry yet so it's going to be slightly lighter it's still kind of damp but i can't wait to see how this knits up it's going to knit up in a similar fashion that the other two do um but this is going to be called one-eyed willy after the movie goonies because that is one of his favorite movies and this is just going to be a gorgeous color skein there so look for that in the in the near future I have to wait for them all to dry before I can get good pictures and get them listed um, and this I don't remember what base this is on this is a high twist this is this is a merino I want to say this is like hemlock this might be our new hemlock 2.0 uh, we are in the process of kind of fine-tuning all of the bases that we love um, and picking out, switching out some of the bases that we had before. But I think this is the new Hemlock Falls base. Um, but yeah, look for that 
in the future. So I don't think I have anything else. So let's go ahead and talk about the little giveaway for this kind of magic sock. Um, comment down below. Um, hmm. Comment what your favorite animal is. Since this is a feline good green, just comment down below and let me know what your favorite animal is. And you can be entered to win this. And I will pick a winner the next time I decide to film a podcast. I have been filming a little more frequently lately. So that'll probably be in a couple of weeks. Um, but until then, take life one stitch at a time. Because... That's all you can do.